Welcome to Doug's Sports Blog and Grill. I'm your host, Doug, here with your Friday edition of the Blog and Grill. Time to get right into it. We have some more Sweet 16 action tonight. The Midwest region tipping off at 715 Oregon, taking on Louisville 12 versus 1. I think Louisville is going to play great. They're going to full court press Oregon. Oregon does have good ball handlers, but I think Oregon will turn it over enough and Louisville advancing on in this one. The late game in the Midwest region, Michigan State versus Duke. Tom Izzo is built for March Madness, and Tom Izzo's team will march on. Derek Nix, Adrian Payne, Keith Appling, they are just too good. And Gary Harris, the freshman, will also contribute as well. So I got winning this game, Michigan State. So I got a Louisville-Michigan State matchup in the Elite Eight, which will be on Sunday. Other two games tonight, South region, I think this is going to be an exciting game. The number four seed Michigan Wolverines versus the number one Kansas Jayhawks. Michigan, probably one of the most exciting teams to watch in college basketball with Stauskas, Trey Burke, who's probably the best true point guard in college basketball. And then you also got Tim Hardaway Jr., Glenn Robinson the third. Just a lot of great players to watch. Mitch McGarry's great down low as well. He brings a lot of energy. I think Michigan is going to, if they can stop Withy, I think they will stop Withy. And I think Michigan will advance on to the Elite Eight. And the matchup of Florida, Florida Gulf Coast versus number three, Florida, the 15th seed in the Sweet 16. For the first time in college basketball history, I think the Gulf Coast's run will end. Florida will move on behind some solid play from Eric Murphy. Check it out tonight. It's going to be some good action. All right, Elite Eight action tomorrow. Syracuse, of course, beating Indiana last night, playing very strongly. Marquette upsetting Miami. So we got a Big East matchup, Syracuse versus Marquette. I think the difference in the game is if Syracuse can shoot the three ball effectively and stop the penetration of Marquette. I think the zone is playing a lot better than it was last time these two teams match up. Remember, Syracuse only lost this game by three points in Marquette. That's a tough place to play. Marquette didn't lose there all year. I think Syracuse gets the win. They're moving on to the Final Four. Last time they beat a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, 2003, they beat Oklahoma and Texas, and they went on to the national championship. The other matchup tomorrow night, number nine, Wichita State versus number two, Ohio State. Ohio State is going to be way too good. Wichita State plays strong, but Ohio State just plays more angry than the Shockers. Ohio State moving on in this matchup. So that's a look at some of our tournament action. Time to take a quick look at the bracket pool before we move on to some Major League Baseball action here. So let's just take a look at the bracket pool. My bracket kind of went downhill last night. I lost two games. The only team I had, actually, I didn't have any correct games picked last night. My bracket, eh, a little bit in tatters, but still doing solid. So winning the Doug's Blind Girl right now is Mike Larkin. Mike Larkin winning it right now. He can win it, pick up the 50 bucks. It's going to be great. Congratulations, Mike. You are leading after the first day of the Sweet 16. All right, now it's time to break down the final division of Major League Baseball, the National League West. We'll start at the bottom, go to the top. I'll tell you who's going to go to the playoffs, and then I'll finally tell you who is going to win the World Series. So here we go. Fifth place last year, the Colorado Rockies. They were 64-98. and 98. They made no big moves. They did bring in Michael Kadire to play some right field. Kind of in a rebuilding stage. He might be able to hit 30 or more home runs, though, now that he's in Colorado. I think they're going to stay about the same, and they will finish in fifth place. Fourth place last year, San Diego Padres, 76 and 86. Not a terrible year. Um, no big moves still made. The big news there is the Chase Headley injury. Chase Headley, of course, their third baseman. He's supposed to be out maybe up to two or three months. I get them losing three to five more games in a tough division, I would say in Major League Baseball. Arizona Diamondbacks, 81-81 and 81 last year. They finished third. They made some moves, not any real great moves. Their key additions, though, Martin Prado brought him into play third base. They brought Eric Chavez in as a bat off the bench. Cody Ross to play some right field. And Brandon McCarthy to stabilize their young starting rotation. I don't think this team's going to win any more games. They'll be right about even keel like they were last year. The team that spent a lot of money in the offseason, the L.A. Dodgers, 86-76 and 76 last year. They finished second, eight games behind the World Series winning Giants. This team's on the upturn for sure. They brought in Zach Greinke. They paid him a boatload of money. Brandon League, they brought him in to close. I think they're going to be in good shape. This team could win six to nine more games this upcoming year. 
And the final team to break down the San Francisco Giants, 94 and 68, of course, the World Series champions. And they had just a solid pitching staff, no big moves in the offseason. They brought Hunter Pence back. They still got Angel Pagan. They're in real good shape. And the move they made today, though, this is new. Buster Posey getting a nine-year, $167 million deal. I think this guy is one of the most underrated players in Major League Baseball. Led his team, of course, to the World Series in his rookie year. So now we're going to go and break down this division. I got the Giants winning the division, the Dodgers second, Diamondbacks, Padres, Rockies. Playoff teams are going to be the Giants and the Dodgers. So as we remember from our previous blogs, our team, the teams that I'm moving on, the American League winners, I have Detroit, the Angels, and the Yankees as your division winners. The Blue Jays and A's will get in on the wild card. And in the National League, the Nationals, Giants, and Reds, your division winners, and the Dodgers and Braves getting in there on a wild card. So winning the World Series, I have the, the, the Detroit Tigers going back to the World Series, and they will lose again to guess who? The Washington Nationals. I think with Strasburg pitching the full year, they're going to be so much better, and this team will find a way to get it done. So that is a breakdown of Major League Baseball for you. Now it's time to do some quick headlines here. Tony Romo has received a $108 million extension. He was set to be a free agent at the end of next season. He picked up a $13 or $55 million of guaranteed money. Justin Verlander, he gets a record deal, $180 million over the next seven years which is interesting as well as these guys are getting paid big time. Sources out of Butler say Brad Stevens will stay in Butler. He was, of course, now the leading candidate to go to UCLA after Shaka Smart turned down the offer. And sources say the Seahawks backup quarterback, Matt Flynn, is now on the trading block. So if anybody wants Matt Flynn, make the Seahawks an offer. The Spend Doug Sports Blog and Girl will be back on Monday. Break down some Major League Baseball opening day action. We'll also have a weekend wrap up as well. Yankees and Red Sox going in on opening day. It's going to be great. I'm going to be watching it for sure. Follow me on Twitter at YankeeBall at 415. Check me out on JBSmooth84.com. This is Doug Day signing off. See you later.